I'm Laura Ingram, and this is The Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Run, Joe, run. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, after millions of illegal aliens, stop calling them migrants, by the way, have rushed into our country, siphoning off our public services, Joe Biden was shamed into making a quick border trip to El Paso. Now, the tour was highly choreographed and generally meaningless, kind of a Soviet-style propaganda coup to show our dear leader in the best possible light. And here you have Joe Biden going right there uh, to the border to see what's going on. So I give him a lot of credit for that. Visiting the border and making sure uh, that conservatives in those areas know that he really is listening to their concerns about border security. He does seem to be working directly on his pro directly on this issue. And he's very aware of what's going on in the border. Coming down and seeing it with his own eyes really made a big difference. And made <laughs> a big difference. Who needs comedy with these clowns? But he did do a heck of a job chatting up Salvation Army volunteers. Or, wait a second, were they from the Secret Service? Same difference. Okay. Now, if you're a Democrat and you're still waving off concerns about Joe's age and declining cognition, then you're just in denial. Or maybe you know that although Biden is one fall away from the senior center lunchroom, he's still the sharpest knife in the Democrat drawer. It's certainly not this woman who stood like a Star Wars sentry behind Biden at that immigration speech last week. And it definitely, definitely is not Mayor Pete starring in his own transportation sitcom known as Leave It to Buttigieg. The DOT aware of Southwest Airlines' antiquated system for scheduling prior to Christmas? I don't run Southwest Airlines' Understood, IT system. but I mean, you, were, you we said do. back on The Late Show that you were confident that they'd be ready to service the tickets that they're selling. And the airlines have made major improvements, largely because we pressed them to do that. The bottom line is... Biden's visit to the border was all theatrics, no substance. Now, we threw a few bones to the enforcement crowd, but they do little to change the math. We're getting overrun. There were over 73,000 gotaways in November, the highest number on record. November also saw the highest number of encounters at the border, over 233,000. And the total number of apprehensions in gotaways for 2022 surpassed 3.3 million. That's another record. But don't let these numbers make you fret, because Team Biden wants you to know they mean business now. My administration is taking several steps to stiffen enforcement for those who try to come without a legal right to stay. We're focused on cracking down on drug smuggling, which is a serious and deadly promise. Or excuse me, promise. We are doing everything that we can uh, to secure the border. Uh, and uh, to deal with uh, irregular migration. Uh, that is a priority for this administration since day one. Uh, irregular migration. Now, that reminds me of when they told us that inflation was transitory. It's all happy talk. No actual facts to back any of it up. You're to ask no questions, by the way. Just believe the empty promises. <laughs> President Camacho stood before the world and promised everyone that Joe would solve all their problems. He would not only end the Dust Bowl and heal the economy, but he would cure acne and car sickness as well. Now remember, Joe promises that soon you'll see and feel all the magic of his runaway spending. By the way, agreed to by key Senate Republicans. Biden saying, patience, people. I know it's going to take time to implement our entire economic agenda, which we already passed, and for folks to feel it in their day-to-day -day lives. But I think folks are going to see it in the next few months. As tough as these times have been, if we look a little closer, we see bright spots all across the country. We're surely making progress. Things are getting better. Progress? Is that what he's calling it? Well, you be the judge. Here are some headlines. 
Americans' retirement accounts are drying up as they're forced to dig into their savings and 401ks to pay the bills. And what about Americans who have no retirement accounts or regular savings? Well, they're paying more than 19% interest rates because they're maxing out on their credit cards. And if progress is me measured in layoffs, Biden's doing a bang-up job. At Goldman Sachs, it's a massive bloodbath, they're calling it, where they're going to start axing 3,200 on Wednesday. And at Salesforce, 8,000 staff will be shown the door. At Amazon, more than 18,000. And remember, big tech and the big banks all wanted Biden. Well, they got Bidenomics, didn't they? And now that he's destroyed the economy, Biden is the Democrats' obvious 2024 choice. After bowing down to the fringe greeniacs and the pro-trans radicals, the Biden team is already trying a phony pivot to the middle. And this pivotal performance art was made possible in part by none other than Mitch McConnell. Well, it's not just this project, but the infrastructure bill, the bipartisan infrastructure bill that the president signed provides dramatic additional assistance for $8 billion over the next uh, five years. Bring home the bacon. But real Americans are not impressed. And they don't want McConnell's friend to run again. No, I don't think Biden should run again. He's too old and he's lost it and people have really lost respect for him. I'm not sure he's going to be up for it physically or quite, quite frankly, cognitively. His approval rates are not good at all. They're very down, and I think that our country needs someone who unites all of us. Wait a second. Is she actually saying that Biden and his kooky cabinet haven't united America? Well, well, it might be hard to unite us. I'm just kind of thinking this through. When they paint half the country as white supremacists and America as systemically racist, they try to act like they're still so devastated about January 6th. But the truth is, the Democrats have an intimate relationship with the insurrection narrative. They're in love with the video and the photos of the chaos. It's sick, frankly. So, by all means, run, Joe, run. But no basement campaigning this time, no debates hosted by ranked partisans, no domination of early voting, no hiding from skyrocketing fentanyl deaths. And no sidestepping questions about Hunter's gravy train in China and his mystery art buyers. And certainly no avoiding responsibility for inflation and a pessimistic nation. You're going to own all of it. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.